Hello, everybody. I think I'm about ready to get started. So, I'm gonna pause... Oops. I'm gonna go ahead and pause... I was looking to see if there was any other achievements on the final day. I don't see anything else there. But anyway, I'm gonna minimize that because I don't want spoilers there. But, from the standpoint of the... I guess achievements, the, the only thing left is just beating the trial from what I can see. But, I think I figured out... There was one thing that was bothering me from last session. Let's boot up the game while I talk about it. So I was trying to think about what the significance of the drawing was before that we saw from Larry. And then I realized <laughs> I had like this like epiphany moment as I was booting up the stream where it was like, seriously, is it seriously he just drew the thing upside down? Is Because they kept showing him with the image where his head is upside down, right? Like he's waking up kind of thing. So I was like, so it wasn't flying. He was just too stupid to paint while while doing the drawing. And I'm thinking, and I'm like, really? Is that is that really what it is? It's like, I couldn't think about how you would hoist the body across. And then I was like, wait, I have to think dumber. <laughs> so I think it was just overthinking that. So like I already mentioned last time, you know, I had a feeling that the cable toe or that the cable, which was brought in significance last time, was used to carry the body across. But yeah, that was just one of the dumb parts where I was like, I wasn't quite understanding, and now I think I do. But anyway, February 10th, 9.39 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Well, welcome, Try. Hope you're doing well. Good morning. Oh, are you by yourself? Ah, uh, morning, pearls. Mr. Nick, please tell me. What's gonna happen to Mystic Maya? I'm sorry. We don't know yet. Well, I, I think I figured it out already, so I think we're good. So j just to recap... I think currently, Iris is Maya, who is Dahlia. Even though they have different hair colors, I don't quite understand that entirely. Maybe it's a thing from channeling Dahlia that her hair looks like Iris's, which is what which is what I would like to say is ultra convenient. Um, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else that, that we weren't we weren't sure about from yesterday? We know we know Godot's we know Godot's the killer. We know that presumably the mystic Elise tried to kill Maya, because that would have been the triggering thing for Godot. Then it then I think it goes into the he's seeing red, so he's angry, so he saw Dahlia. So Japanese love their puns, so that would make sense if he's the murderer, because all he could see is red, which is ironic because he couldn't see the blood on the um I don't even remember what it was, the pillar. Right, so I have a new expansion for Final Fantasy XIV released the other day, so I have stuff to focus my mind on. Nice, nice. So, aside from that, I guess there's the mystery of, like, why... Uh... Why am I blanking on names? Why Iris was helping Godot? That, to me, is really weird. I, I feel like if they had written it so that it was following Dolly's instructions, this game would have made a little more sense. So the only thing that would, would make sense in terms of the events given everything we now know about the murder location, was that Godot had to have been the one that tied the body to the bridge and sent it across. And then it, it landed with the thud. That's why the staff broke. We already determined that last time. Then, But then it had to have been Iris that moved the body. I don't understand why she did that. I think that's where I'm confused. Like, even if she had been working with Godot, why was she then trying to sabotage the body or did she think it was Dahlia like I my mind is a little confused on the motive there because it's just kind of polluted honestly so like she tried to sabotage the murder scene for some reason I don't understand her motive entirely and her removing I guess the sword cane is what freaked out the other priests bikini so i don't know why she did that again without having instructions from dahlia like I, it just to me it's a it's a little nebulous like i it, i'm pretty sure those are the events i just don't fully understand why she did that like why would she do that for godot or why would she do that potentially for dahlia like what would that have helped either of them do i'm not quite understanding maybe i'll feel enlightened as we go further in this uh trial 
But anyway, <laughs> I love how they before they were like, oh, he doesn't have a motive. And I'm like, I, I don't need the motive. I figured out the events. I the motive to me doesn't entirely make sense to me, at least from Iris's standpoint, why she's an accomplice. Which is ironic because I feel like we're going to end with a not guilty, even though she definitely totally messed with the murder scene. It'd be like, not guilty, but you're going to jail. But anyway, let, let's go forward from here. As I said before, I don't think there's any mystery left as to what is going to happen here. Other than... No, I, I really don't think there's any mysteries left. I think we solved the last... The bridge thing was really bothering me. And then we were revealed the murder scene, which I didn't get before that point, which is fine. But anyway. Oh, the ten... Oh, the ten feet fall is from the bridge. Oh, it was a red herring. Now, okay. Now I think I've answered all the points where I was like, why were they emphasizing that? I think we're good. Anyway, let's move forward. I'm sorry, we don't know yet. Investigation is still going on, so I wasn't allowed into the inner temple. Damn, chat. I would have these mysteries solved so fast. I don't need spiritual guidance on this. Get out of here, game. Oh, I see. So is Sister Iris still trying to remove those trick locks in the training hall? No. She's the defendant in this case, so she can't be at the inner temple. She's required to be here in court. Um, then... How come she's not here in the defendant's lobby? I have to admit, it's kind of strange. If you're looking for Iris. She's in the prosecutor's lobby. Oh, that's not who I thought was talking. Uh, Edgeworth. Well, what's Iris doing over there? She's going over today's testimony with the prosecutor as we speak. Today's testimony? You heard me. Iris is going to be testifying as a witness for the prosecution. Yeah, so, so it's obviously Dahlia is going to be framing Maya, and that's why she wrote Maya's name upside down in blood. So, uh, so far I'm not, I'm not getting the curve. I think, I think we passed the curveball. The drawing took me a while to figure out, definitely, and I was like, oh, that's so stupid. Of course it would be. Because they did show us with him upside down, like, three times, and I'm like, did that have any significance? I'm like, it did. Wait, what? The prosecutor is squeezing her for a confession. Or so I heard. Francisca von Karma, what are you up to? I know what you're thinking. But Francisca isn't going to be the prosecutor today. What? Then who is? I was going to say, ironically, the killer, because it's probably going to be Godot. Who else would it be but Godot, Godot of course. Godot. Francisca is engaged in some important work at the Sacred Cavern. The Sacred Cavern? You don't mean that she's... Exactly. She's been out there all night, trying to remove those trick locks. With the head nun's assistance, naturally. We estimate that the lesser lock should be taken care of in about three hours, aka when we're gonna take a break of the trial and have the big reveal. Hope everything continues to go smoothly and we receive some good news then. Yeah, thanks, Edgeworth. Prosecutor Godot intends to nail this shut today. Be prepared to fight like there's no tomorrow. You don't have to tell me that. Touché. I can already see it in your eyes. You're not the same fever-ridden, frantic man maniac you were yesterday. It's strange. On the way here, I decided that today would be the end of all of this. Oh, hinting at the end of the Phoenix Trilogy. Almost immediately after I made that decision, I found myself getting stronger. Interesting. Do you've passed your cold on to someone else, literally. And with that, I leave the rest in your capable hands. Partner. Uh-oh, we were called partner. Thanks. Still don't have answers for most of the riddles plaguing this case. Oh, Phoenix. <laughs> right, Chad? I have almost all the answers to this case. We're good. We're good. I think the only thing we're missing is... Uh, I think because the game just hasn't literally given it to us. But we don't have a weapon that... Uh, Mystic Elise was using on presumably Maya because she wouldn't have known about the sword cane. So I think that's going to come up as a way to catch her at some point. And then the other thing that I think is going to come up is that if Godot was there early, we're probably going to get him caught up on the hanging scroll. So he's going to say he was there as part of the investigation, 
but he's probably going to be one of the only people that knew that this was here. So if he had been there, he wouldn't know what this was a picture of. So I already feel pretty confident. I know what the I know what the key evidences are. Like the whole Iris's hood thing is proof, you know, that the real Iris gave us the hood. So I don't think there's any question what our inventory is. This one took me a while to think about because like because I was thinking like, oh, you know, I, when I saw this, I'm like, yeah, this is a bridge. But then when they were showing us before in last session, those supporting beams or yeah, those things were below the bridge, not above the bridge. So dumb. That took me so long to figure out what that was. Just because I wouldn't think anybody would draw it upside down because it's just, just really stupid. But anyway. Well, anyway, Phoenix can pretend we don't have the answers. I, I think I'm good to go. I, I, don't, I don't think there's a... I don't think there's a mystery left at this point. The circumstances around the murder of Miss Elise Donim. No. I mean, Miss Missy Fang. The impossible flight Larry claims to have seen. Yeah, we know that. It's the, the drawings upside down. And what that woman is really after. What do you mean what that woman is really after? We know this. They want to they wanna kill Maya. What? What do you mean? Wait, this is the least mystery of mysteries. We have. Wait, it's right here. What do you mean? E even if you even if you didn't figure out the case, it's it's right here. Right there. So, I will solve them all and bring this whole tragedy to an end. So I'm guessing that Godot must have somehow overheard this, because the only. So maybe, maybe, actually, that was a mystery from last time. Maybe he was the one that opened the letter, because I was thinking it was Mystic Elise, but it, but I have to put it back in the context of Godot as the killer. So I think Godot just knew where to find it, but then I don't know why he then just let it go through. I don't know. There's a part of that that's confusing, but it's, like, also one of the only things that makes sense. Anyway, we're in the courtroom. It's 10 a.m., courtroom number 7. Court is now in session for the trial of Iris of Hazakura Temple. You know, dot dot dots. Dot 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 from Phoenix. Um, Your Honor, what are you? Who? Me? Well, my little brother came to visit me in the, my chambers early this morning. All of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, he developed a scorching fever and fainted. Oh, rip other judge. Therefore, I'll be standing in for him. I see, Your Honor. So they're brothers. That explains a lot. My poor brother. He looked a bit pale. Not to mention sad that he couldn't be here. Oh no, the coffee begins. It is impossible to predict what the future has in store for any of us. Well, I mean, you're going to jail, so I'm going to predict that. This is precisely why people feel the need to judge the past. And we, the court, have been charged with the solemn duty of passing such judgment. Well said, Mr. Godot. We understand exactly what you said, at least up until the end anyway. This judge is so senile. Now then, Mr. Godot, please proceed with your opening statement. Humans are fragile, fickle beings. Our heart chains with the shifting of the tides. There's only one thing that remains a constant in this crazy world. Is it that the Phoenix Wright courtroom system doesn't make any sense? The bitter darkness that lies at the bottom of this bug. Yeah, whatever. I like mine better. So then you mean... Um, forget it. What do you mean? During yesterday's trial, the accused refused to admit her role in the crime. Today... She's had a change of heart. So... What? I'm not entirely sure why he's playing along with this. I'm assuming he doesn't want to get away with it. Like, isn't the whole thing... Didn't he just try to protect Maya? So why would he allow this person on the stand if she's about to target Maya? It, unless... Unless this is some weird meta thing, like, <laughs> oh, I knew you special. do it, Phoenix, right? Again, the motive in this game is very weird right now. 
Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple has a confession to make. Confession? The defendant? Iris, why didn't she discuss this with me first? Bang. Very well. This court will now hear the defendant's confession. Yeah, like, and like, what's Dahlia's in-universe reason for thinking that she is potentially Pearl over the other characters? I, I feel like this final part is opening up a lot of questions to me that I don't think I fully understand from like a logic standpoint of things. Upon meeting a beautiful lady, always ask for her name and profession. That's one of my rules. Um, my name is Iris. I'm but a simple nun, undergoing training at Hazakura Temple. Witness, is there something that you want to confess to? Yes. But first, I want to apologize to Mr. Wright. I... I can't continue lying to everyone anymore. It's alright. What is it? Mr. Wright, I have to admit that I... I did play a part in this terrible incident. Yeah, you were the killer. Or... Are you actually confessing? Are you saying that you were the one who murdered Miss Elise Donim? No, I'm not, Your Honor. But I dealt with the cover-up after the murder took place. Which is tr technically true. Uh, Iris did do that, but I don't think this is Iris. After her spirit left, took the lifeless shell of Mystic Elise and carried it to the Hazakura Temple Courtyard, where I desecrated it. But I don't think that's... Is... Is that a, Iris' real original motive? Was it desecration? What? Dang. Order in the court! Order! Witness! Are you... Are you saying you were an accomplice to the murder? Yes. That's correct. What? Three minutes in corner, I'm already covered in a cold sweat. Ah, oh, everyone on the planet is an accomplice to something. It just happens to be that in this case. It's to murder. Isn't that right, Mr. Trite? Ugh, oh, that could do. So this is the confession they were conferring about. It pains me to say this. It looks like Iris' testimony was all a lie. No, it's not. No, 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 no. Iris' testimony crumpled and shoved into a pocket. Eek. Now then, little lady. If you don't mind, I've got a question for you. Whose crime were you trying to cover up by your actions? Iris was covering for someone. Ugh. I'm definitely up the creek without a paddle. Or a life jacket. Been at Hazakura Temple ever since I was a little girl. Hazakura Temple is run by one of the branch families of the Korean tradition. One of our missions is to protect the main family. I'm sorry, but main family? Yes, and that's why I would dirty myself, if need be, to protect her. The daughter of the master of the Korean channeling technique, Mystic Maya Fei. Huh? Wake up and smell the coffee, Trite. She's... she's naming... Maya! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. So not only did you witness the murder, you know the name of the murderer. Yeah, she's not gonna know about the staff. This will be the checkmate for her. I'm terribly sorry, but it's true. I saw her commit the crime with my very own eyes. And then I cleaned up the area to try to protect her. Objection! Objection. That's ridiculous. Maya could never do such a bang. The defense will refrain from commenting until the appropriate time. Now, witness, let's hear your testimony. What exactly happened on the night of the crime? Yes, your honor. I was going to say, it's very convenient for her to give the perspective of what the attack looked like, given that she was the one that attacked. <laughs> How convenient. Thought I was prepared for the unexpected. Oh, Phoenix, you don't know what's going on ever. 
but I never imagined the case would wind up going in this direction. Well, I, I kind of did last session. Damn, chat. This case would be... This would be open and shut. Open and shut, chat. The real murderer. Went to the inner temple that night and saw it all happen in the garden. Saw Mystic Elise strike Mystic Maya with her staff. While Mystic Maya was stumbling, Mystic Elise moved to deliver a fatal blow. Oh, we're definitely pressing that statement. Mystic Maya tried desperately to defend herself and stole the weapon. Yeah, I don't think she did that. It was only in self-defense. You can't blame her for it. Yeah, I don't believe any of those. I think we could checkmate her real quick here. So it was in self-defense. Yes, Mystic Elise was the one who attacked first. Which is technically true, because she would have been in the possession. She would have had the spirit in, so I that's actually true. Hmm. That's why I tried my best to protect Mystic Maya. You move the victim's body to the temple, so that Maya wouldn't be suspected. I wonder, it, like, I thought that might have been maybe the reason for the real, for the real Iris. But it's still kind of ambiguous, honestly. Isn't that right? Not bad. You got the true instincts of a, or you got the instincts of a true criminal. Something's not quite right. Sure was established yesterday that Iris never went to the inner temple that night. And that person who did go was... That woman. I love it's that woman. Iris even admitted it. Bang. Now then, Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. Oh, we're going in, chat. Oh, we're pressing. Hold it! She moved in to deliver a fatal strike. Yes, I'm sure of it. She threw down her staff and reached into her robe for a weapon. Wait a minute. What was this weapon? It, it was some kind of dagger. Okay, so now, now we have the real attempted murder weapon, but not the murder weapon. We have the murder weapon, which is the cane. But if it was the real Elise that did it, she would have known about the cane. So why would she reach into her robe? So I think we can present that as like our argument for why this character is lying. Dagger, huh? And Elise Stonum tried to stab her with this weapon. To kill Miss Faye? Yes, exactly. Huh. You look like I did after I mistakenly took a swig of Worcester sauce. I think that's how you say it. Like the, the, almost like the barbecue sauce. I, it's one of those words where I've seen it and I've never said it out loud because I don't like barbecues. <laughs> never ask for it. You have a problem with the testimony we're hearing from your client, lawyer boy. Boy or boy? Why'd he go like, uh... <laughs> I feel like he's going a little Pegasus on me there. Hmm. Do I have a problem with Iris' testimony? Absolutely! Your Honor, I have a small problem with the witness's testimony. You do? But this witness is your own client! Yes, well, uh, nevertheless. That's fine. Witness, let's add your last statement to the testimony. Yes, sir. Hey, just a moment. It's my job to say that. Bang. Listen, Gramps. I won't say it again. Final judgment will be rendered by me. Well, I hope you're going to find yourself guilty then. Ugh. Okay, now. Let's continue. He threw her staff away and pulled a dagger from inside her robe. So let's just immediately present the sword cane because we kept that a secret. Objection. Sister Iris, there's something strange about your version of events. Huh? Miss Stonem throwing her staff away makes no sense at all to me. But all you could do with the staff is hit someone. Naturally, you wouldn't know this, Sister Iris, but the victim's staff had a special feature about it. As you can see, it's a sword. Ah! If Elise Onim really had wanted to kill Maya Fey, she wouldn't have needed to use a separate dagger. Not when she already had a beautiful blade in her hands already. Well, Sister Iris, what do you have to say? Uh, or I... Objection. 
That was an impressive bit of investigating, Trite. Never would have thought there was a sword hidden in the staff. But even so, how should I put this? A long sword is unwieldy, and thus quite ineffective in close quarters combat. Maybe that's why she chose a dagger over her blade. Um, well... Anyway, the type of weapon she chose to use isn't what's important. The important thing is that she tried to kill Maya Fey. Which is technically true. As long as there's nothing strange about that, no problem with her testimony. There is something strange about this whole testimony. Bang. Well, Mr. Wright, the prosecution has a point. Very well, Your Honor. The evidence will now... Oh, the defense will now present evidence back to its argument. Mr. Wright! I have here another piece of evidence that shows that this testimony can't be trusted. Because Miss Elise Donim would never attempt to take the life of Maya Fey. Oh, I don't know why I'm blanking. I just, I just present a profile, right? Because she's the mother? Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, because they wouldn't know about the Misty Fey thing. L l let's present that. That makes sense. Take that! Take that. <laughs> I like that our evidence is like, prove they didn't kill it. And we just hold up a photo of the person and they're like, I don't understand. <laughs> At least Onim would never have attacked Maya Fey. How can you be so sure? Because the victim's real name was not Elise Donim. Her real name was Misty Fey. Fey? Oh, no! Not Mystic... Not Mystic Misty Fey. Who is this Misty Fey? Is she related to Misty Fey, the master of the Korean channeling technique? She's also the mother of Maya Fey. Are you serious? Is it... Really true, Mr. Wright? Was Elise Donim actually the great mystic... Misty? There's no doubt about it. Looks like Iris had no idea. I can hardly believe it. The idea that she would try to kill her only daughter, one she hadn't seen in 17 years. Perhaps the prosecution could offer some explanation for why she would do such a thing. Again, I don't feel like this is a checkmate in normal court. Ugh. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. On hearing the witness's testimony, it seemed natural enough. However, in light of some facts that have just been presented. One, that the victim supposedly threw away a sword during a fight. And two, that the two people battling to the death were mother and daughter, despite the facts being unbelievable when taken on their own. When taken together, the entire story seems difficult to believe. Listen. There's nothing in this world that is impossible. Except for one little thing. Yes, what is that one little impossible thing? Huh, you still don't get it. Oh. Welcome, Nate. Hope you're doing well. I think maybe my beans are under-roasted, but you have no idea, Gramps. Um, did you get to your point? Heard this witness's confession this morning. Just as I had taken the first sip of my eighth cup of morning coffee. I feel like he would die of a heart attack. <laughs> You're going to ruin your health, my friend. I actually agree with the judge for once, how rare. Anyway, after hearing this woman's confession, I had a detective who loves to investigate, sent to the scene of the crime. So they're going to be able to find the dagger, which Godot might have hidden? And he discovered this little beauty. That's how he's not going to not go to jail. He's, he'll just die. That's true. Is that the dagger the witness testified to seeing? Oh, you know what I just thought of? Actually, wait, how would that work? I'm just thinking. So... Uh, I don't know. I, 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 
I'm hesitant to say it. I don't know. This, that's speculation. I'll, I'll come back to it. I I don't know whose blood that is, is, is what my question is. So I'm curious if they'll tell it right away. It, if they don't, I'll make a guess. Obviously, Your Honor. But do you not notice something else? Now that you mention it, if you look closely, there appears to be blood on it. Where did you find that? I didn't see that when I investigated the crime scene. Did you investigate the pine tree at the crime scene? Huh? The pine tree? The dagger was stuck in the backside of the pine tree. The last blow was struck, ending the violent battle between two women. This little baby was thrown in the direction of the back of the pine tree. Which means, the blood on the dagger belongs to the victim, correct? Huh. Were you even listening, old man? Oh. Wait, how would that work? So he, he definitely shoveled the blood, or... Yeah, did, did he shovel the blood to the... Burnt? Like, what? where did he put the blood? Did he put it in the incinerator? Is that why Pearls was able to use it later? Was he the one that dug it out? So that way he would burn the blood? And that's why they said there was nothing in it, because they burned blood, because it would have evaporated, and that's why it had a funny smell. Is that what that was in reference to earlier? Hmm. I first heard this confession this morning, just as I had taken the first sip of my 13th cup of coffee. Wait, he said 8th earlier. Didn't you say it was your 8th just a few minutes ago? See, Phoenix, I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm glad he is, too. I didn't have enough time to get the blood analyzed on such short notice. Oh. Okay. So... So there's three people it could belong to. It could belong to Elise. It could belong to Maya. Or... It could belong to Godot. Is it possible that he got cut without his visor on? In a struggle with Elise? I wonder. I could see this very dramatic tears of blood. I, ever since I saw it, I'm like, I wonder I wonder if he's gonna leak blood or something later. <laughs> Where, like, the wound will still be fresh because it just happened from the night prior or something. We'll see, I guess. In any case, the course will accept the dagger as evidence. Furthermore, I order that a blood test be performed on it immediately. This is my sweetheart. Make sure you treat her right. Bang. Bainlift, get this piece of evidence to the crime lab for testing immediately. Dagger added to the court record. Found behind a tree in the inner temple garden. The blood is now being analyzed. I, I don't know how the visor would necessarily come off. It, it would be a nice touch, I guess. But I don't know if it really matters, ultimately, in the case whose blood this is. Now then, the testimony we've just heard had numerous unbelievable aspects to it. However, after having the, found the very dagger the witness spoke of, I believe we can consider her testimony to be credible. Cute girls never lie. Ever. Uh, well, he's just BSing now. In any case, witness, if you could please testify again to this court. Um, about what, Your Honor? About the incident you saw. The battle between the two women. Yes, Your Honor. The battle. Alright, well, this is gonna be mostly lies. It's just finding the right statement to contradict with her. Mystic Maya stumbled briefly after being hit over the head with the staff. But then she dodged Mystic Elise's next attack and stole her weapon. Okay, I don't think any of this is useful so far. Suddenly, Mystic Elise was on the defensive, but they're back to the Stone Lantern. Hmm, that could be important. <laughs> That's when Mystic Maya stabbed Mystic Elise. Mystic Elise managed to fling the knife away, but then she collapsed. That was a very heartbreaking story. I don't know if there were any bad feelings between them, but it had been 17 years since Mystic Missy's disappearance. Perhaps they simply didn't recognize each other anymore. Hmm. That seems reasonable. Bang. Now then, Mr. Wright, proceed with your cross-examination. Uh... 
What am I contradicting? I don't think this matters. I don't think that matters. I don't know if I should press that statement? Possibly. Loss of blood from stab in the back. I was I was about to comment on the body fell, but I couldn't remember if that was before or after death. I was like assuming it had to be after death due to the bridge incident. But okay, yeah, we can we could just present this straight up then. Okay. Objection. Objection. Something about about you just isn't right today, Iris. Huh? Until now, I didn't think you were a type to make such a careless mistake. However. The testimony you just gave contains quite a few contradictions. What do you mean? What's so wrong about my testimony? According to you. Maya Faye stabbed the victim while she had her back to the stone lantern, correct? Yes, that's right. But in that case, the victim would have been stabbed in the stomach, right? Yes, I think so. But according to the autopsy report... The cause of death was due to blood loss from a stab wound in her back. Ah! Uh. This proves the victim was stabbed from behind, not from the front. Sister Iris, it appears another seed of doubt has sprouted from your testimony. Ah! Uh. Dang. What, what is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? Ah, uh, it's simple. People are like books. We've all got a front and a back. You get my drift? Um, is that all you have to say? I can also say that darkness loves to play with the human mind. Objection! Could you please knock it off with the cheesy proverbs and illogical metaphors already? The point is, too much of this testimony just doesn't make sense. Throwing away a useful staff, people fighting being mother and daughter, and now, she falsely claims the victim was stabbed in the stomach. Hmm. There certainly are some inconsistencies. Well, Iris, how about it? Well, it's just... If you ask me, just being too naive about the whole thing. What do you mean? There are 253 distinct types of bitterness in coffee. Pick out each one requires total concentration. The use of all the senses. Are we really concentrating on what this witness actually said? Prosecutor Godot, explain yourself. The witness was quite unambiguous about her, amb her own ambiguities when she said that the garden was dark and she couldn't see clearly. Human needs one thing to see clearly, and that is light. Light? By the way, did you know, Azakura has a rule that on a night's when an acolyte is at the inner temple training, which he'll know because he was there, the stone lantern in the garden must be kept lit. Hmm. I did wonder why the stone lantern was what it was there for. Well, if that's true, then the witness had been able to see the crime more clearly. Normally, yes, Your Honor. But according to the head nun, Sister Bikini, on the night of the crime, it was impossible to light that stone lantern. Impossible? It hadn't been used in a long time, and the wick was no good. In other words, it had to have been nearly pitch black in the garden that night. There could have been a faint light coming from the training hall, but that's all. Most enlightening. Yes, that illuminating fact has chased all the contradictions away. If the staff was dropped, it would be difficult to see. It also explains why they didn't recognize each other. We can't see the demons that lurk in the night. That's why humans are weak. Isn't that right, Trite? No! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order! Here, Your Honor. Let me present the stone lantern into evidence. Oops, you just doomed yourself. Maybe it will rekindle the flame of truth in your mind. The lantern out of the court record, a lantern from the inner temple garden, was not lit the night of the crime. 
Why is the judge just sitting there with that look on his face? What's wrong, Your Honor? Was that flame too hot? This lantern, there's something written on it. Huh? Why? It's written in blood. Oh boy. But the judge didn't know about that yet. Written in blood. Mm hmm. It. It says. It says Maya upside down. What the? Oh, yes. That's right. You're being cornered and then stabbed by Mystic Maya. Mystic at least didn't fall down right away. She must have been writing that on the stone lantern behind her. With the blood that was draining out of her body. Mm hmm. Dang. Mm hmm. It certainly looks that way. Objection. Hang on. Hang on just a minute. What are you all talking about? Yeah, he can't see it because he has red visors. What do you mean, what are we all talking about? We're talking about the message written in blood. Hm. Nonsense. This lantern, it's as clean as a whistle. Eh. Could it be? He can't see the bloody writing at all? I mean, he couldn't see ketchup earlier, so I'm not sure why this is a surprise. Now that I think of it, it say something to me yesterday. My sight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see anything. Everything. Wait, we know this already. Why Why do we need this to be told to us in this case? Wait. <laughs> Happened in, like, case two of this game. That's what he meant by that. Bang. In any case, this is an obviously an important clue. Oh, look at Blue Donna telling us about classes in Pathfinder. We now know that the crime scene was dark. And the victim scrawled this message on the stone lantern. Well, Mr. Godot, anything further? M Mr. Godot? Uh, um... Okay, then. Let's move on. Godot is literally shaking, and somehow... I don't think it's from caffeine overdose. I believe it has now been established that Miss Stonem was killed by Maya Fey. That's... that's just wrong! Now it's time to turn our attention to you. Yes, sir. After the victim died, you did something, didn't you? Let's hear it. We're all ears. Sister Iris's cover-up. Cross-examination. The mystic at least died. Called out to Mystic Maya. I thought it was my duty to protect the future master of the Crane tradition. So I removed the body from the inner temple myself. I dragged it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge. Well, we know that's not true. Then I used the snowmobile to carry it back to Hazakura Temple and... I used the Seven Branch Sword to alter the way the wound looked. So you moved the body? Yes. I was raised at Hazakura Temple. Oh, maybe in the exchange? Oh, maybe that's why Dahlia knows this. Maybe Dahlia and Iris had a conversation first about what Iris really did, because she wasn't seen there at the time. Maybe that's how she knows these details. Yeah, that would make some sense. Because I don't think Dahlia would otherwise know, unless she was able to talk to Iris about this. Oh, a great deal of thanks to the Fae Clan. But even so, I never imagined that at least Donim was actually Misty Fae. I've, I've committed a terrible sin. Hmm. A terrible trick of fate. I believe you're looking for a twist of fate, Your Honor. I intended to return to the Inner Temple after taking care of the body, but... You were spotted by the head nun, correct? Yes, and that's why I couldn't go back. Your story makes sense, I suppose. Bang. Mr. Wright, go ahead with your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Let me examine the evidence again and figure this out. So, we know the body movement is wrong. I don't think Phoenix knows enough about the drawing to do anything with it, so I'm gonna meta rule that out. Remove the body by yourself. I, I think Ado technically moved the body, so that doesn't really matter. Dragged it behind me all the way across the dusky bridge, and I used the snowmobile. So one thing I remember from earlier testimony, do we still have it? We have the weather data. So if we could get her to tell us whether or not it made tracks. We know that it made tracks going to the bridge, but not coming back from. 
the blue dana copy deleted messages because that would be concerned if blue dana copy to spam link um i'm not sure i'm assuming not because it's deleted so the auto mod gets rid of the message i don't think it could copy anything that was deleted but anyway uh so let, let's try to get there let's press the statement hold it the snowmobile i knew that would show up sooner or later Yes, I had the key. I used the snowmobile to travel from Hazakura Temple to Dusky Bridge. This is the part that was in question the other day. I asked for more details about the tracks. She really did move her body by snowmobile. There should be tracks left in the snow, right? Well, yes, naturally you would expect tracks. This picture was presented at yesterday's trial. Are these the tracks from that ride? Yes, I think they are. But, you can only see one set of tracks here. I don't see what's so strange about that. Snow was still falling when I left Hazakura Temple. I see. Snow was still falling, huh? And then when the murder took place, it had already stopped. That's why there's such fresh-looking tracks. Hmm. How about it, Mr. Wright? What do you think about that testimony? It's very important. The murder took place. The snow had already stopped. It doesn't make sense if you stack it up against the other evidence. Your Honor, I'd like the statement Iris just made added to the testimony. What? Does it have something to do with the case? All will be made clear if you allow her statement to be added to the record. And whether or not. Yeah, that was nice. Ah, oh, this should be fun. You get this snow business cleared up, shall we? Yes, sir. By the time the murder had taken place, it had already stopped. So, I think there's two things. The question is, which do I present it to? I guess I just present the weather data here. By the time the murder took place. The murder took place at 10. So it shouldn't have been... I guess we also don't see the... the the drag marks in the snow of the body either, which doesn't quite make sense. There's not a, Honestly, that opened up more questions than I was expecting on this. I thought this was kind of open and shut, but now I'm kind of doubting myself. So it's still from 7 to 10.50. So I have two statements I could apply this to. I'll try this one first. Oh, so that's not the correct one. Alright, so I'm gonna try the other statement then. So maybe that I dragged it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge would have worked. Hmm. So I think okay, so hold on. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Maybe I can use... Maybe I can use the lightning strike instead of the snow. Maybe I can get her on this statement. Because we know the bridge was out. Let's try it. You claim the snow had already stopped when the murder occurred. But I'm sorry, Iris. That just isn't possible. What? This is the weather data from the night of the murder. Okay, so... So I was right... But I just presented... Oh, whatever. <laughs> the chat, that's a whatever moment from Phoenix. Why did you... Why did it make me add a statement if it didn't want me to present evidence to that? That actually confused me. Wait. <laughs> that statement was there earlier, I thought. According to, the according to this, the snow didn't stop until 10.50pm. But you couldn't have crossed Dusky Bridge at that time. 
oh are we going back to the lightning because i was like I, I was like i kind of had two statements i could have pressed on with the same piece of evidence so i i mean both are true we know she didn't send she didn't take it over the bridge because the bridge should have been on fire and then also the track should have been if she dragged it behind also should have made stuff and it would have stopped or it would have still been snowing after that time if it took place at 10. it's five minutes before the snow stopped dusky bridge was stuck by lightning and it caught on fire what did you say the bridge it was on fire yeah the, only dahlia wouldn't know that you don't mean to say you didn't know about it. It was because of the lightning strike that the bridge burned down. What? But it can't. It can't be. Looks like you still haven't figured it out. No matter how hard you try to deceive or conceal the truth, you can't pull the wool over the eyes of a real defense attorney. No! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. I think that's one of those things where I got tripped up for knowing too much. And I feel like the game punished me for knowing the crime, but not knowing which statement, where both of them are technically true, which one it belongs to. I think I got Phoenix right there, chat. The bridge was already on fire when the incident took place. That's right, the inner temple was already totally cut off from the outside world. There's no way you could have crossed the bridge, body or no body. Ah! Uh, uh. Witness, even my patience has its limits. Any further lying and I will find you in contempt of court. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Objection. Objection. The only person here that is truly contemptible is you. Is he gonna say Mr. Trite? Oh, old man. Oh, why is he, why is he doing that on the judge? Me? How dare you? Whether this witness lied or not doesn't mean squat right now. You mean it doesn't mean squat? You're so full of it, Godot. Squat? The important thing now is to find out the truth. Isn't that right? Yes, of course, but whether it was snowing or not snowing, whether the bridge was burning or not, there are two facts that can't be disputed. First, the body of Elise Donim was discovered in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. And second, the head nun, Sister Bikini. Witness Iris desecrating Elise Donim's body. Makes a good point, on both accounts. That's right, I'm not lying. What are you claiming this time? It wasn't myself at all that night. <laughs> Ironic. So my memory's still somewhat hazy. Objection! Objection. You've stood at the witness stand and testified this entire time. Are you telling us that your memory of that night is hazy? Objection. Objection. It is only human to err. If you're so perfect, Trite, maybe you could explain this for the court. What is it? When the murder happened, the bridge had already burnt down. But somehow the body traveled across the bridge. It was found in the temple courtyard. Perhaps you have some kind of perfect explanation for this little magic trick. Wait, I actually know this. Wait, am I allowed? <laughs> right, chat? Wait. <laughs> Wait, this isn't a magic trick. I already know how it was done. Ugh. Well, not exactly, no. Oh, damn it, Phoenix. Drawing out this trial longer than it should be. This should be checkmate for me. No, there must be some other way she got across the burnout bridge. Yes, Phoenix. Oh, do we not have a picture of the bridge? Like, the real bridge? Oh, that's awkward. Didn't think about that until now. Unless I could somehow demonstrate it. We'll never know the truth. Looks like the defense is not prepared to offer a suitable explanation. You see what I mean? In other words... You're in no position to suggest that this lady's testimony isn't the truth. Ah! Bang. All right, then. Witness, let's hear your testimony once more. About what, Your Honor? You've admitted that you moved the victim's body. Nevertheless, your prior testimony con contained a rather large inconsistency. Please add an explanation for that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. 
Will this be her final testimony? Witness testimony moving the body. Other than walking over the bridge, there's no way to move the body. Oh, well, 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 chat. Case closed. I don't even need to read the other statements. This one I at least know. So I must have just gotten confused, I guess. She, she seems to be having a lot of that lately, Dahlia. Was the snow still falling or had it stopped? Does it really matter that much? Are you saying that there is a way to cross a burning bridge? Yes, there is. Hmm. Oh, it was just a misunderstanding. I see. This is a photo of Dusky Bridge after it burned down from the lightning blast. It was taken on the morning after the incident. There we go. Now I finally have a photo to work with. And see, now I can see... We hadn't seen the bridge in a while, that if we compare it to the drawing... Those little beams going to the upper left and to the upper right are actually the bottom things that we saw here. Well, that was so devious of them. It certainly, it certainly was burned to a crisp end. One of the suspension wires even snapped. It's amazing the whole bridge didn't fall. And it's not snapped, it was used on purpose. Clearly, it would be impossible to carry a corpse across a bridge in this condition. Dusky Bridge photo added to the court record. All right, now we're good. Unless I do something to discredit this testimony, it's going to be deemed as the truth, and Maya will be accused of murder. That's right. I'm only going to say it one more time. It is only human to err, and only humans can spot the errors of our ways. The more sense he makes, the less sense he makes. Bang. All right, Mr. Wright. Please begin your final cross-examination. You know, aside from the game kind of tricking me there for a moment, this one is pretty straightforward. Just gonna absolutely hammer her here. Objection with the sketch. A dead body flying over a burning bridge. I wouldn't exactly rule out the possibility. Ooh, what? Ah, oh, you're saying it's possible. Don't make me laugh. The only thing that's possible about your claim is that it's been pulled out of thin air. Welcome, Kirk. Hope you're doing well. I don't know about that. In any case, we have a witness who did see it happen. Per he, he went preposterous, but he spit out his coffee, so it was like preposterous. <laughs> that was quite something. Who is it? Who is this witness? I can't chicken out here. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep on the attack and go, go, go. This is Lee Stonim's brilliant and highly gifted apprentice, Larice Stonim. Brilliant, highly gifted. Apprentice? I remember what he said in his testimony. A night he was at the Mountain Shack, Heavenly Hall. And, yeah, see, his head is upside down here. And then he painted it like that, I guess. One would think that you would normally rise up and draw what you see, but he is really stupid, so I, I wasn't thinking of that possibility originally. Yeah! Raw, indeed. And that's when he witnessed the event. I think you've all seen this sketch before. It's an exact drawing of what he witnessed that night. Everybody dot dot dotting. Are you serious? Today's not April's full... It's not April Fool's Day, is it? Mr. Wright, are you seriously claiming the victim flew through the air? Yes. Are you using this pathetic scribble to support your argument? Damn, he got burned hard. Uh-oh. The judge looks like he's about to blow a gasket. Ugh. Well, Trite, there's nowhere for you to hide now. Other than looking like it was drawn by a six-year-old, does this sketch prove anything? Yes. I'm pretty sure it does, and I'm going to prove it. <clears throat> Listen, I know your tricks. I'm trying to turn this whole thing upside down. You're so eager to turn this case upside down. Why not start with this sketch? Oh, see, he's giving you the hint. Oh, I see what you did there, Godot. I see what you did there, because the sketch is upside down. He's trying to help us, technically. Upside down? Why did Godot say that? Bang. 
All right then, let's hear the defense's theory. What exactly is this sketch trying to show? I don't think old Whiskerface is going to forgive any more mistakes. All right, Phoenix. Look carefully and think it over. Sketch drawn by Three Stone M is evidence of nothing, exactly what happened. Technically, I think exactly what happened is true. But I'm going to say a complete contradiction. Something is obviously funny about this sketch. I'm no art critic, but even I can see that. No, no, that's not what I mean, Your Honor. Three Stone M stated it over and over, that this sketch was exactly as he saw it. However, we're to believe this testimony, and this sketch contradicts reality as we know it. Contradicts reality? Ah, oh, this is getting interesting. Looks like you're back to that finger-pointing thing again. Hey, Trite. What exactly contradicts reality as we know it? Oh. What? What, what part of- wait, what part of the whole image being upside down contradicts reality? <sighs> oh, that- that- that's kind of- okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of rude. At least they give you only one error point. So the whole thing is upside down. So, I gotta... Is it the left or the right wire that is cut? So we know... Okay, so we know the body was swinging on one of these cables, and the cable rested in the middle of the bridge, and the judge had brought that up just prior to this. But I... I um... So, it would have had to have been... Let's reason it out. It would have to have been the right cable, because the right cable was cut because it was Godot swinging it to the left side, but the image is upside down, so would that make it the left cable? Take that. Take that? Is this wire connected to the bridge? That was that was more challenging to think about early in the morning than I thought it would be. The wire. Isn't it just the woman floating in the air? Sadly, no. Welcome, Prometheum. Ah, is that the thing that contradicts reality? It is indeed. Then show us the reality it supposedly conflicts with. Show us something that will point out how she will... How the sketch contradicts reality. Okay, I should just be able to present the bridge here. So... I had to think about that. So you see how there's that cable hanging down? That was the thing I was pointing out in the image. So I'm just going to present the photo. I'm glad I took a look at that right before we went into that. I wasn't quite ready for that. Take that! That's a photo of Dusky Bridge, correct? Yes. Now compare the sketch and the photo for a minute. In the sketch, the wires appear to be above the guard wires. But on the actual Dusky Bridge, jumping Jehoshaphat, the wires are below the guard wires. What? Bang. Order, order, order. This sketch is somewhat different than what's depicted in the photo. However, isn't it likely the artist just saw it wrong? Perhaps he- or perhaps he just drew it wrong. Either way, it sounds like you're just wrong. With someone like Larry, I admit a mistake is definite as a definite possibility. But then that begs the question, why did he make a mistake? What was the reason? Are you saying you know the answer to that? Listen, think back, all right. Remember what Larry, uh, was doing when he witnessed this event. Yeah, he was waking up. Is a heavenly hall waiting for a lover that was never going to come. He waited and waited. Finally, he laid down. But then, lightning shoots from the sky and sets the bridge aflame. Now ponder what sort of position Larry must have been in at the time. He's lying on his back, which is why I remember the scene the way he did. He was lying on his back. I can't see how it relates, but it does, Your Honor. That is the reason why the wires in the sketch go up instead of down. Ugh! Ugh! No way! Larry Stone M witnessed the event while he was lying on his back, face up. In other words, the scene that he saw was actually upside down. 
Bang, bang, bang. So then, this sketch should actually... I think you finally get it, Your Honor. The correct way to view Luis Donim's sketch is like this. This is how it should actually look. The victim's body wasn't flying above the bridge. It was actually swinging below. That's right. Just like a pendulum. Ridiculous! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, or objection! Of all the things to say. A pendulum. The bridge was burning to a crisp. There's no way to get across it. Why do you make a mistake? It's freaking Larry. Welcome, Dago. But if the body had been found at the Inner Temple, it would have caused problems. This is where the criminal decided to take a gamble. They used the burning bridge to get the body across to the other side. And a pendulum was the only way to get it done. Objection. Objection. Let's think about this for a minute, shall we? Dusky Bridge is about 20 yards long. Which means it's about that far from the Inner Temple to the opposite cliff. Yes, that sounds right. In order to cover that distance with the pendulum, you need a rope at least 10 yards long. To get a rope that long, you'd have to plan ahead. Objection! Objection. Lightning strike that night could have only been an accident. It doesn't make sense the culprit would have prepared the rope beforehand. So then, they didn't have to get the rope ready. The rope was already right in front of them. What? I'm saying that it was just a matter of using what was already there. Bang. In that case, Mr. Wright, please guess, uh, give us an explanation to support your theory. What makes you think the criminal had the rope on hand to create the pendulum? Am I just presenting the bridge again? I guess I am. <laughs> Take that! And the meaning of this is, you want to know where the rope came from. It's hanging right there in front of your glorious beard. Oh, this, this is one of the wires from the bridge. And the lightning struck the bridge and set it on fire. One of the suspension wires came loose from its anchor. The criminal didn't have any time to waste. They tied the wire around at least Stone Im's body. We. I guess it's good it just let go, by the way, without dropping her before then. Because there's simply no other way to move the body. Huh. Glug, 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 chat. Bang, bang, bang. Mr. Godot! Hmm. Seems that Mr. Godot is more focused on his coffee than answering my question. It seems the odds of rope being readily available were very high. Though I suppose it's not an impossibility after all. Objection. Objection. Possible or impossible? It's not the question we need to ask. There's only one question. Did that really happen? Right, I wonder if you could prove what happened to us. Do you have any actual evidence the body was swung over like a pendulum? Alright, so I mentioned this before we started. We should be able to present the autopsy report. The, she the body fell 10 feet after death. Take that! Before I present my evidence, let me review what we know so far. According to this photo, one of the wires snapped. Looking at the map, we can see it's the one that was in front of the inner temple. Yep, that was the one we investigated earlier. So then, that was the spot where the criminal... Yes, precisely. Now let us consider the body's movement by looking at the overhead map again. The body was pushed from this point here. It would drop on the opposite bank at approximately this point where the staff was. Did you say drop? Well, they must have failed to catch the body on the other bank. What? what? Makes you think something like that happened? Because I have evidence that suggests her body dropped some distance. W what kind of evidence? Take a look at this autopsy report. It says here that her body fell about 10 feet after her death. 10 feet, huh? That's most likely the height difference between the two sides. The body overswung due to forward momentum, but then came loose and fell about 10 feet. And then, as a result of the landing impact, this crystal sphere was knocked loose. That's... Yes, blood-same amethyst crystal. 
It's the one that came off Mr. Lee Stone Imp's staff. And even more important is the place where this crystal sphere was found. Indeed. I believe it's already marked on this overhead map. Crystal was found. Ah! Precisely, Your Honor. The very spot where the pendulum would arrive, if given the right amount of speed. Bang. This explains your theory quite well, Mr. Wright. You have provided us with the way the body could have been moved that night. An impressive deduction, Mr. Wright. Most impressive. Got coffeeed. Mr. Wright. I thought this cold coffee might help cool you down. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Godot? That was a dark and bitter guess that you made, Trite. But you forgot about one thing. Buffy Assault, exactly. Oh, and what would that be? The aroma. Huh? Coffee's most reliable accomplice is this deep and profound aroma. Um, the rest of the court doesn't speak Coffinese. Can you elaborate a bit more? The criminal had sent the body to the other side like you say. And naturally, there must have been an accomplice lying in wait to catch it. Yeah, it was Iris. An accomplice? The criminal wasn't able to cross Dusky Bridge. So, who collected the body? What do you have to say about that, Trite? I don't think that's quite a gotcha that he thinks it is. Mr. Godot is correct. This can't be the work of a single person. Say it was a coffee rush, maybe. Well, Mr. Wright, you know what you must do. Yes, Your Honor. The body couldn't have been ma made it to the Hazakura Temple without an accomplice. Bang. Very well, then. If you please, Mr. Wright. Who was the person that received the body on the Hazakura Temple side? Okay, we're gonna present... Iris... Take that! It can only be you, Sister Iris. Huh? Ah! Uh, but I... I... I don't see why you're so surprised. The only way to transport the body from Dusky Bridge is by snowmobile. But with her bad back, Sister Bikini could never pick up a body like that. You're the only one that could have managed it. Objection! Objection. Right. Even listening to the witness's testimony. The night of the crime, this little cutie pie was on the cleanup duty in the Inner Temple Garden after the mother-daughter bloodbath. Objection. Objection! I haven't forgotten, but have you, Mr. Godot? This witness was also seen at Hazakura Temple, desecrating the corpse of the victim. Hmm. Strange indeed, it's almost as if, on that night, the defendant was in two different places at the same time. Sister Iris, let me ask you something. Why didn't you mention it when you first gave your testimony? Mention what? The pendulum, of course. Using the sketch drawn by an eyewitness. I've established how the body was moved using the burnout bridge. Which means it's now a fact that this occurred. Something you should have already known. No! I had no idea! I didn't know anything about a pendulum! The body couldn't have been passed along to the other side without your help. You should have known about it. In fact, it'd be impossible for you to be clueless about this whole thing. Unless you're not really Iris to begin with. What? How can you say that, Mr. Wright? Bang. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You, you're saying this witness isn't Iris of Hazakura Temple. Objection. Objection. Are, are you serious, Trite? You, you mean, this, this woman is... There's no one besides Iris that could have received the corpse that night. Now I get it. Now I know why I've been sick to my stomach this whole trial. Why her whole demeanor changed so suddenly from yesterday. And why she's trying to pin this murder on Maya. The woman that's standing there at the witness stand. Her real name is... Phoenix, right. No, it should be, uh... <laughs> should be Dahlia. Take that. Take that! Never thought I'd have to utter your name again. I'm a ghost! Exactly, I'm a ghost. Let alone see you. It's been a long time. 
Jolly Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Sister Iris had a twin sister. And you're looking at her, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. That name rings some bells. It's distant bells, but bells nonetheless. Ah, just your imagination, Gramps. The file contains all the relevant data about Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, yes, I remember now. That case five years ago. My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor's all mine. No, oh, the honor's all mine. Oh, thank you, Callum, for subscribing. Hopefully you're doing well today. But according to this, Dahlia Hawthorne is already dead. This is the North Star, apparently. It says her execution was carried out last month. So what? Death has no meaning in this courtroom. <laughs> it's quite a line. What? Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. Wait a minute. How could you? My sister, she's already dead. What kind of... Objection. Biggest understatement? That's a statement, exactly. You of all people should already understand, after all. The blood of the master of the Korean channeling technique flows within that body. The Korean channeling technique. Now where have I heard that? That's right. You're not Dahlia Hawthorne herself. You're the spirit of Dahlia, currently inhabiting the body of a spirit medium. What an exciting story. Exciting, but quite impossible. No, it's not impossible. This is Maya. You're asking us to buy the Dahlia Hawthorne. Just happened to be channeled by someone. Oh, welcome, Chris. Death has no meaning in this courtroom near the legal system, exactly. On the very night of the murder, your temple where her twin sister, Iris, was... Well, if you're gonna put things that way, then yes. Objection. We're supposed to believe a coincidence like that just happens. Objection. Naturally, it was no coincidence. The whole thing was part of a plan from the very beginning. It's all written right here in these instructions. Uh, what's that? These instructions were written by your mother, Morgan Fay. Part of the plan called for Dahlia Hawthorne to be channeled. That night, there were two irises at Hazakura Temple. Two of them. Even the time of the channeling was planned out. As soon as you hear the lights out bell. In other words, 10 p.m. However, Iris was seen before dinner time. That means the Iris that was at dinner was the real Iris. The Iris who gave me the the judge is very accepting of this, by the way. And the Iris who gave me this hood in the real in the main hall was also the real Iris. Meaning that the Iris sister bikini saw at the inner temple was someone else dressed as her. Namely, one Dahlia Hawthorne. Objection. You even know what you're saying, Trite. This whole channeling the spirit of Dahlia Hawthorne business. Yes, it's true that you found plans that talk about it. However, there's one thing that's perfectly clear. The witness currently standing in the witness stand is the real Iris. What? What? Calm down and remember what you know about the night of the crime. After meeting Sister Bikini, the Dolly Hawthorne that had been channeled would have been stranded at the inner temple due to the lightning strike. We... It was later that the body was moved by pendulum. That's right. Naturally, that would mean the iris that received the body was. The real iris. Are you with me so far? Yes. After being notified of what happened, the police came to Hasekura Temple's main hall. There they found Iris in her room and arrested her. Ever since, the police have had her in her custody. Yeah, I suppose. I can't deny any of that. Phew. Thank goodness. It looks like he's finally convinced. Something still seems off. Way off. Still not convinced the Iris here is the same one from the other night. Huh. I suppose you're about to say something really ridiculous. Like... The real Iris and the spirit of Dahlia. 
somehow switch places. Switch places? Dang. To be perfectly honest, there's still quite a few things I don't understand, but I do know that unless we confirm the witness's identity, we can't continue with this trial. Iris doesn't have the spiritual power needed to channel Dahlia, which means they must have switched places somewhere. Well, Mr. Wright, at the time she was arrested at Hazakor Temple, have there been any chances for Iris to switch places with Dahlia Hawthorne? There was one. That ultra convenient earthquake from earlier. Your Honor, I think there might have been one chance. Oh, explain yourself. Yesterday, for a few minutes, Iris's whereabouts were unknown. Unknown? What do you mean? What I mean is, there was a span of time in which Iris was able to move freely, unsupervised. Bang. Well, who was it? Who would give a murder suspect time to move about freely like that? I'm sorry. I know you didn't mean to. It wasn't your fault. The person who gave Iris the chance to freely move about was... Well, we're gonna present Edgeworth. Sorry, Edgeworth. Take that! This is... Mr. Edgeworth, isn't it? Your Honor, there was a fairly large earthquake yesterday, was there not? An earthquake? Hmm... Earthquake? Oh my goodness, the inner, the inner temple. This kind of tremor might. How could I have? She fled. She escaped. We went to the inner temple right away. And it's true, Iris was already there. However, they'd already switched places by that point in time. When I arrived at the training hall, I met by none other than Dahlia Hawthorne. Bang, bang, bang. That's quite enough already, Mr. Wright. Now see here. No judge in his right mind would consider the idea of spirit channel again. Be quiet. It's been a long time, Mr. Judge. That voice? Guess I'll have to ask again. I'm meeting a beautiful lady. Always ask for her name and profession. It's one of my rules. Dahlia Hawthorne. And my current profession? Permanently retired. Huh. You're not going to bother hiding your identity anymore, huh? Why should I? After all, I'm dead. There's really nothing you can do to punish me. What is going on here? Dahlia Hawthorne. Never thought we'd meet again. Never thought we'd meet like this. But this time, I'll end it. For her, and for myself. It has been a long time, Leneth. It has been a long time, Leneth. To be continued. Ooh, cliffhanger. I should be able to keep going. Oops, I hit the button. February 10th, 1.06 p.m., District Court, courtroom number 7. Bang. Now then, let's continue where we left off, shall we? Well, witness? Yes. How can I help you, Mr. Judge? Well, it seems if we're here to learn the truth, we'll need to hear your testimony. I have no problem with that. But when you've seen what I have, sometimes the truth is better left unknown. In any case, let's hear your testimony. Tell us about the plan that was carried out that night. Witness testimony, the plan. Oh, plan began with my death. Stupid plan hatched by Morgan Fay and saw her own daughter as the next master. But for it to work... Maya Faye would have to die. The idea was for me to kill Maya, and have the blame pinned on Iris. The plan went wrong. It seems to have succeeded anyway. 
Hmm. I think I have anything to really contradict anything. He says, wait a minute, so you are... Wait a minute. Did you just say the plan was to kill Maya Fei? Yes. You have a problem with that? Don't give us that nonsense. There's no way that... Watch yourself, Trite. Got a problem. Solve it during cross-examination. That's one of my rules. Mr. Godot is correct. And by the way, that's one of my rules as well. Kill Maya. Could it be true? Well, no. Not true. Well, I mean, the plan was that, but it's not true. Alright, let's press every statement. Hold it. You were executed last month, correct? Yes, I was hanged. It wasn't exactly pleasant. How did you manage to discuss the plan? How did you talk with Morgan Fay? Last year, she was transferred to the same detention center as me. Since I was on death row and she was my mother, it was actually pretty easy to meet with her. I see. That's when you discussed the plan. Wait, is the mother also on death row? Is that what was just implied just then? Huh, are you crazy? First, that woman was planning to kill me as well. Even though I'm her own daughter. All to make Pearl Fay the master of Karain. She's a cold, twisted woman. She thought she could finally regain her lost honor. The honor she lost when her younger sister, Misty, took her place as the master. Ever since that day, I've been working on this plan. Hmm. A plan, huh? A stupid plan hatched by her to install her own daughter. Okay, let's press. Hold it. You're talking about Pearl Fay, is that correct? Yes, but first she had high hopes for the two of us. You and your twin sister, Iris? That's correct. Fortunately, neither of us had much spiritual power. That's why we were abandoned by her, along with our father. Abandoned? The only person I ever really cared about in life was myself. My sister was a nuisance, so I convinced my father to leave her at an old temple. Oh, nice. You mean Iris? Yes. My father remarried a woman who also had a daughter. Nothing more honorable than orchestrating a murder, exactly. The less children you have, the more money there is to go around, right? And on top of that, my father had absolutely no interest in children in general. How horrible. The really horrible one was that woman. That bitter, vengeful woman. It was her stubbornness that gave birth to that child. Pearl Fay. She was born with an abundance of spiritual power. Unfortunately for her. Morgan Fay heaped all of her broken hopes and dreams onto that poor child's back. Just the forehead is ridiculous. All because of her pathetic dreams, having her bloodline become the main family. Hold it. I would have to die, but why? For our bloodline to succeed as the main family thus making Pearl the new master. The remaining descendants of the current master had to be taken care of. Objection! Objection. The Pearls would never agree to a plan like that. She adores Maya. How sad. You still don't get it, do you? But Pearl wanted had nothing to do with it. Morgan didn't care one bit about Pearl. The only thing she cared about was the position of the master. That's all. That's ridiculous. She was willing to sacrifice anything and anyone to achieve her goal. The life of her daughter. And naturally, the life of Maya Fey as well. Did anyone do that? It was for me to kill Maya. Let's press on that statement. Hold it! You... You were going to kill Maya? Pearl didn't need to know anything about it. All she had to do was follow the instructions in the letter and channel me. Then I would have simply used her body and finished the job. In any case, I'm already dead. There's nothing any any excuse me, and there's nothing any of you can do to me. Ugh. The plan was to blame the crime on your younger twin. The forehead is where she serves her abundance of spirit power. Probably true. On Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. She and I look absolutely identical. No one can tell us apart. Someone were to witness me killing Maya. Naturally, they would think it was Iris that had done it. The witness in this case was the head nun, Sister Bikini. I never would have guessed she was going to return to Hazakura Temple that night, but 
she wound up seeing Iris's crime anyway. And why did you want to pin the murder on Iris in the first place? She's your twin sister, isn't she? Twin sister? Don't make me laugh. She's nothing but a backstabber. Couldn't care less about her. Backstabber? You just don't understand. You never will. Anyway. I went wrong, but it seems to have succeeded anyway. Hold it! Think the plan was a success? You heard me. Just as that woman had hoped. Maya Faye is dead. Now the title and master will pass on to Pearl Fay. Objection! That's absurd. Maya is just... She's just trapped. Trapped inside the sacred cavern. Really? You're as foolishly optimistic as ever, aren't you? My darling Feeny. Do you want to know the truth? Ever since we met, I've despised you. Your sniveling naivete and your pathetic... Pathetic faith in other people. I just want to know one thing. What did you personally think of Morgan Fay's plan? I told you already, didn't I? It was a stupid plan. It had no point. No value other than fulfilling her own greedy desires. Yes, we certainly nothing to be proud of. That's how you feel. Why did you help her carry it out? Why would you do it? Why would you kill Maya? You may not understand it. Being the kind and gentle soul that you are, you may not be able to appreciate why someone like me would help a woman like that. But then tell me, why? Isn't it obvious? I'm not like that woman. I only act in my own self-interest. The reason I helped her was for myself, for my own personal satisfaction. What did you say? So this woman, Dolly Hawthorne, she had her own reason for wanting Maya dead? Wait, are we seriously not able to put together that she wants to hurt Mia by killing Maya? No? Okay. You understand why I would kill Maya Faye now? What was my goal? Oh, this statement is new. This wasn't here before. Well, I mean, I could discuss it. We're going to present Mia then. Objection! Objection! Could it be that your actual goal had nothing to do with Maya Faye herself? As I said, none of you have the power to punish me anymore, as I'm already dead. Well, I have the same problem, you see. You can't punish the dead. You can't take revenge against them either. You wanted to take revenge on someone? For Phoenix, we can't put two and two together, that's true. I was sentenced to die because of that woman, Mia Faye. Somehow knew this was it. I wanted to send her a message. It was, at her, it was at her hands that I suffered my first humiliation. I wanted her to feel the same pain she made me feel. Sadly, I realized revenge was impossible. I gave up. And the reason it was impossible? Was it perhaps because Mia Fey had already died? Yes, I realized. There's only one way to take revenge against the dead. And how do you do that? Even when the body dies, the spirit, the ego, it lives on, forever. I wanted to take away the person that Mia Faye loved most. I wanted to kill her with my own hands. That would be the one and only way I could take my revenge against Mia Faye. That was the reason I helped out with that woman's plans. Just for that? For that you would kill Maya? Your goal was no different than that of Morgan Faye. Bang. As they say, the apple doesn't far fall from the tree. What a cruel plan. Cruel, cold, and heartless. Hm. Don't waste your time preaching to the dead. I've already told you. Not a thing you could do to me. Ugh. That night. At about 9.30pm, I materialized into this world. I quickly pinned up my hair and put on a demon warding hood. Then I picked up the staff that was by my side, left Hazakura Temple. So, at least Onumu channeled her after all. That ridiculous head nun never noticed a thing. There we go, jiggle physics on the cheeks. 
She left Maya Faye at the inner temple. Mobile back clutching her poor old back. What did you do then? That kid was easier to handle than I'd hoped. I caught up with her in front of the stone lantern. Then I took out the dagger I got from the storeroom and... Got it stabbed from behind, presumably. So then you... You're saying you stabbed Maya? It's strange, but I don't have a clear memory of what happened after that. Yep, because you were killed again. What does that mean? No clear memory? I don't know. I think... I think I was stabbed. You were stabbed? At the last minute, Maya Faye must have stabbed me. I'm sure of it. Nope. Objection. Objection! That's not like her at all. Maya wouldn't stab a french fry with a plastic fork. Anyway, suddenly lost consciousness. But before I did, I scrawled her name on the lantern. Just as I was passing out, I wrote Maya behind my back. I hoped it would cast suspicion on her. I can't believe she was thinking of that until the bitter end. That's where my memory temporarily stops. It stops. I don't have any memory of actually killing Maya Faye with my own two hands. My very last memory was... Maya's terror-filled terror eyes. When I woke up after that, I was in the sacred cavern surrounded by darkness. You were in the sacred cavern? The entrance was sealed with one of those trick locks. Somehow I'd been trapped in there. How did you wind up in there? I'd like to know that myself. Anyway, I was worried. I didn't know whether or not Maya Fey was dead. I swore I wouldn't return to the underworld until I, until I knew I had killed her myself. Hmm. For a ghost, you're one tough cookie. I wanted to get out there and make sure she was dead. But I couldn't do it. I couldn't get out. The trick lock stopped you, huh? I didn't know how to remove it. So then, so then you're saying you actually combined against your will inside this sacred cavern? Yes, I wanted to get rid of that annoying lock as soon as possible. But it wasn't easy. You're getting interrupted while working on it. Interrupted? It was early in the morning. Someone came into the training hall. What? Who? Could it have been Maya? Nope. I thought the same thing, but I couldn't see. Why not? If someone had spotted me, I would have lost my chance to take revenge. So I made sure to hide myself well at the back of the sacred cavern. That morning, only two people could have gone into the training hall. Maya and Pearls. Pearls went there to cover the hanging scroll and gravy. Still, I finally managed to remove the lock. But, I was too late. What do you mean by that? The flies had already started to gather. The bridge had been fixed and the police had started their investigation, correct? Naturally, I couldn't go out. So instead, I turned to the cavern and put the lock back on myself. I realized I wouldn't get a chance to see Maya's corpse as I had hoped. But just then, Lady Luck showed up. Lady Luck. After that big earthquake, she showed up all by herself. The real Iris? She said she'd come to make sure the sacred cavern was alright. Stupid girl. Came out from the sacred cavern and got a feel for the situation. And I locked her away in my place. I finally learned exactly what happened. It was then that I learned the plan had actually succeeded. What do you mean your plan had succeeded? I misunderstood one thing, you see. That night, the one that had summoned me. I'd assumed that it was Pearl Fay. Well, of course you would have assumed that. It was written in the instructions. But I was wrong. The person had actually called. The person that actually called my spirit back was Misty Fay. 
picture book author. W what? Well, that's really the only possibility, isn't it? After I lost consciousness in the garden. It was her body that was left lying there. Maya Fey. I'm able to kill her with my own hands, after all. But even so, made her commit the most vile sin a human can commit. And that is... Matricide. The sin of killing her own mother. Ugh. No way! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. What is the meaning of this? It's true that I was the one who attacked Maya Fey. But even so, the murderer who actually snuffed out Misty Fey's life was none other than... Your darling little Maya. Objection! Ridiculous. That's nonsense. Are you sure about that? Just think about it. There's even evidence supporting these facts, isn't there? What? What do you mean? What is this so-called evidence? The fact that Maya Faye's disappeared is evidence enough, isn't it? Pull on my eyes. Nice try. Huh? The idea she's still in the sacred cavern is just ridiculous. She wasn't able to escape from the inner temple. That much is obvious. In that case, there's only one place she could be. Ooh, where? Do I have to spell it out? The bottom of the Eagle River. Where else? Eagle River. Maya Fey killed her long-lost mother. Can you imagine the guilt she must have felt when she realized that? That's why she threw herself into the Eagle River. Most bodies that wind up in there are lost forever. So, what do you have to say now? Beanie. Ugh. Ugh. Uh-oh, phone call. Godot? This is Godot's theme. Oops. Sorry, that's my phone. What kind of ringtone is that? Beep. I'm assuming they just found Iris, which is what's about to happen. Godot here. Okay, thanks. What? Was it something important? They just finished removing the locks from the sacred cavern. That's great! What about Maya? There was a woman in the cave. Was it Maya Fey? It was the accused, Sister Iris. Huh? Don't look so surprised. I locked her in there yesterday. Just finished telling you that. So, what about Maya? Where is she? There was no one else found inside the sacred cavern. No, it can't be. I told you, didn't I? She's dead. No. No! Oh, Phoenix, so easily tricked. It seems that this case has come to an end. A tragic end. Sadly, it appears the killer of Elise Donim, also known as Misty Fay. <gasps> oh, wait, hold on. Are we going to complete this case without Mia Fay? Oh, please let us. Please don't let Mia Fay show up. Oh, God. Please don't possess Pearl, I beg of you. <laughs> Can we please finish a case without them interfering? Chad, we were doing so well, right? Like, we've been Pearlless and Maya -less. Please don't show up in this case. Was her own daughter, Maya Fey. Overcome with guilt for what she had done, Maya Fey jumped into the... jumped to her death in the raging waters of the Eagle River. It can't be. Huh. Ludon is confused. Right. Have you ever heard this one? Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. No matter how improbable it may seem. What is that supposed to mean, Prosecutor Goodell? That was probably the most straightforward statement. What do you mean, Judge? According to this witness, Maya Fey threw herself into the Eagle River. However, is that really the truth? Remember, this woman testified earlier that 
bridge was already on fire when the murder was taking place in the garden. It means that Maya had thrown herself in the river. It must have been near the in inner temple side, near the bridge. Oh, right, there is like a drought there or something, right? So she wouldn't land there. It's the same bridge. That's right, that's where she jumped from. But that's impossible. It's impossible to jump into the river from there. What? Yeah, I think if we... This one that had it? Yeah, so this came up before in the other murder trials. So see how there's like the... If you look at the bridge... There's, like, the dirt on the right side near the temple. That came up in the previous case as well. So that's about what I thought. Don't get your panties all twisted up, Trite. Just relax and think through the whole thing again. So it's impossible. Why I couldn't have thrown herself into the Eagle River? Bang. Well, Miss... Well, Mr. Wright. Miss Hawthorne claims Miss Faye threw herself into the river from the inner temple side. Do you have any evidence that refutes the claim? Well, I'm gonna... Immediately present the map because that's where the land area was. Take that. Take that! It's impossible to jump into the Eagle River from the Inner Temple side. No one knows that better than this witness. Yup. What did you say? Eleven years ago, you jumped into the very same river. Just take a look at this overhead map. As you can see, below the cliff on the Inner Temple. Temple side is a big rock shell. Oh, oh, you're right. She would have re she wouldn't have reached the river if she had jumped off from uh, from there. In other words, she had jumped. Should be able to see her body in this photo. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh, you finally figured it out. You. No. Bang! 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 Order! Order! You... you're just playing with me. Maya's fake body is at the bottom of the Eagle River. There's nowhere else she could possibly be hiding. Miss Hawthorne, have you ever... Have you heard this one before? Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. Yes, just a few minutes ago. Maya Faye wasn't inside the sacred cavern. You know that she didn't throw herself into the Eagle River. Correct. It eliminates all the most likely possibilities. Now, although it seems improbable, there's still one other place she could be. What? What is this one possibility you're talking about? That's obviously a bluff. So where is her dead body then? Finally, I think the pieces are falling into place. Normally the living have no way to punish the dead. But I think there is a way to give Dolly Hawthorne the ultimate punishment. Shall I tell you, Miss Hawthorne? Shall I tell you where Miss Maya is this very instant? She's in the Inner Temple. In the Hazakura Temple. In this very courtroom. We'll say in this very courtroom. Wow, if you get it wrong, you get four strikes. Nice. There's only one possibility left. Namely, she's right here in this very courtroom. You say she's here in my courtroom. Dahlia Hawthorne, I seem to recall that you said, I misunderstood one thing you see. So what? But I think there's one more thing you misunderstood. What do you mean? Tell me something. This very moment, who is channeling Dahlia Hawthorne? Well, why that, that's obvious. It's Pearl Fay, the pathetic little sniveling runt. You're wrong. Pearl's tried, but she couldn't do it. I've never failed at channeling someone. This is the first time it's happened. Is that there any explanation for how you couldn't channel a spirit? It could happen if someone else was already channeling the same spirit. Someone called me before Pearl did? But who? Pearl's even tried again on the day of the, after the crime. But she couldn't do it. What could that mean? I think the truth is becoming clear to you right about now. Am I correct? Ah! Uh. It wasn't Pearls that channeled you. It was someone who called you before she could. It was the attorney badge. No, it was, uh, we're gonna present Maya. Take that. Take that. This is an easy one. Pearls couldn't do it, and Misty Faye is gone. There's only one possibility left. Come on already, I can't stand the tension. 
Elia Hawthorne. The person channeling you right now must be Maya Fey. What? Bang, bang, bang. But how could that be? Remember what this witness, Elia Hawthorne, said about her goal. She said that her goal was to kill Maya Fey. Yes, that's right. But if Maya channeled the spirit of someone that was trying to kill her. Ah. Well, Gramps, what would happen? Could it be? It looks like you finally understand, Your Honor. Well, I don't. What are you going on about? What I'm going on about is the reason Maya channeled you. There's only one reason. There's Larry Butts. To protect yourself from you. To protect yourself? From me? Yes. The night of the crime, you're only interested in one thing. Killing Maya Fey. Path back to Hazakura was closed off and there was nowhere for her to run. Then the problem became, where would be the safest place to hide? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, you mean, that's when she channeled me? All this time, you thought you'd been channeled by pearls. That's why it never occurred to you. And Maya's hiding place was you. No. No. Don't say that. You're saying that I, Dolly Hawthorne, was played for a fool by that little whelp? Maya Faye killed herself. Isn't it obvious? Objection. Objection. Sorry, but no. It would have been impossible for her to jump into the Eagle River. This was the only avenue of escape open to Maya. The only way that Maya could disappear from the Inner Temple. I don't believe you. A stupid little girl like that, who has never been out in the real world. She could never come up with a plan like that. Oh, did Nia... Nia probably told her. Who could have given her such a brilliant idea? Well... Me, of course. Oh, there we go. Of course. Can't can't get through without the channeling chat. Roll your eyes. But Mia. Mia Fey. It's been a long time. Dahlia Hawthorne. I would dot 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 this too. This is true shenanigans happening in this courtroom. So it's true. It was you. Yes. Ah. Uh, you're something else. But what? What are you doing here? That hair. It's pearls, right? Tell me something, Dahlia. I want you to think back to that night one more time. You just cornered Maya in the Inner Temple's garden. And then, in the final moments of the fight, you lost consciousness. I was stabbed by Maya Fey. Wait, other people can see her now? Everybody's channeling everybody, apparently. Also, I think it's two ends in Lenith, but I, I could probably shorthand it that for that in the future. Actually, Maya lost consciousness at the same time as you. It she has did. Been a long time, Lenith. Oh, it played eventually. Not terribly surprising since she was about to be killed. I could probably just make it one end in case there's a typo. Not a big deal. When she woke up, she was in the training hall. That's when Maya decided she needed help. So she channeled me. She explained in a memo the situation she was in. She asked me what I thought she should do. She did that? I can't believe it! Of course, I didn't have all the details, but one thing was perfectly clear. And that was, I knew that you couldn't be allowed to wander free. Free? What do you mean? It was a race against time. I wrote down two things that Maya had to do. Channel Dahlia Hawthorne as soon as possible. And lock herself in the sacred cavern until help a lot arrived. Though it was Maya that put the lock on there. Yes, but why did you order her to do those two things? She hadn't done it. Dahlia Hawthorne would have been channeled by someone else. I won Pearl Fay. Pearls? Yes. Pearl didn't properly understand the plan. All she was trying to do was follow her mother, Morgan Fay's instructions. If she had succeeded in channeling Dahlia Hawthorne's spirit, things would have turned out very badly, to put it mildly. 
So that's how it was. Ellie Hawthorne would have used the body of Pearl Fay. Kill Maya at all costs. Yes, it certainly sounds like that was the intent all along. How dare you! I won't forget this! Why not just admit it, Dolly Hawthorne? <laughs> Your little plan was nothing but a big failure. Ooh, excuse me. Yes. Another failure to add to the pile of shame, wouldn't you say? What do you mean by another? Think about it, Dahlia. Remember all your past crimes? Not a single one of them was a success. They all ended in failure. What? How dare you? Eleven years ago. The fake kidnapping. Your very first crime. You got your hands on a two million dollar diamond. But... After Terry Falls escaped and went to meet with Valerie Hawthorne, the truth was exposed. Shut your mouth! That wasn't my fault! It was because of that stupid oaf of a prisoner, that weakling of a policewoman. And then, one year later, you tried to kill me. Well, I'm still alive, but... You wound up killing someone else. As a result, you were sentenced to death. It's one stupid move after another for you, but it's no longer funny. You! Wipe that smug, happy-go-lucky smile off your face! And now this. You've messed up again. You let Maya Faye escape, even though she was right there in front of you. Ugh. 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 Uh. Mia Faye! Mia Faye! Mia Faye! Mia Faye! You... you spinster! I was supposed to kill Maya Faye like I swore I would. If you had on and if only you'd gotten this spiky-haired jerk the guilty verdict, I wouldn't have been hanged to death. True. But I think you finally understand, Dahlia Hawthorne. You will never defeat me. What? What did you say? Whether you're alive, dead, or somewhere in between, you will never defeat me. As long as I'm around, you're destined to lose for all eternity. Ugh. Ugh. I remember what you said earlier in the trial. That there's no way we could punish you, because you're already dead. What about it? Then you said, even when the body dies, the spirit, the ego, it lives on, forever. That's very true, Dahlia. That's exactly the punishment you'll never be able to escape from. For all of eternity, you'll have to remain as Dahlia Hawthorne. A miserable, pathetic... Weak creature who can never win at anything. I am inevitable, Mia Faye, something like that. And for you, there is no escape from that. No hope of freedom. Since the day you were executed, the narrow bridge that once stretched out in front of you has burnt to a crisp. You... You're... Wrong! It... Can't be! How could I... Lose to the... Likes of you! It no longer matters. I don't care whether you win or lose anymore. The only thing I want is for you to come out of Maya's body right now. Ah! Ah! I... Look at her go, chat. There we go. I'm not... Ready, not ready to go. Uh oh, she's getting Magatamud. Yay, we killed Ghost Dahlia. Is she becoming a JRPG final boss? Pretty much.
Yeah. Sis. Now then, I assume you are the real Iris. Yes, I was just rescued from the sacred cavern. I must say you and your twin sister are indeed identical from what I can see. In any case, it appears that everything has finally been cleared up. Mr. Godot, what happened to Dahlia Hawthorne? If you ask me, Your Honor, looks like she went back to the hill she came from. Hmm, seems that Misty Fay wasn't the only victim of this crime. Maya Fay, as well as young Pearl Fay, were also victims of this wicked and selfish plan. Yes, Your Honor. The tragedy of Medium Valley has finally come to an end, it seems. No, it hasn't. We didn't find the other killer. For a liar. It'd be best for everyone if no further attempt is made to channel that spirit again. Um, Your Honor? Yes, what is it? About this whole spirit medium thing. It's almost weird how comfortable you seem to be with the concept now. Oh, I said that earlier. Well, to be frank, my younger brother is quite judgmental. He often criticizes me for not studying hard enough. That's why I made a concerted effort to study up on the Karain channeling technique. Hey, isn't that the New Year's issue of Occult? I've seen quite a few things in my many years on the bench. In all that time, I finally learned this one thing. <laughs> that Phoenix has the most ridiculous of them all. Each case is different and takes place in its own world, if you will. It's, that's a way to phrase it, I guess. In order to finally understand that world, first we have to immerse ourselves in it completely. And that's where my brother and I used to defer. Fight against senility, old man, you got this. Hmm, never thought of it that way. Bang. At any rate, it's time to pass judgment in the case of Iris of Hazakura Temple. Objection! Objection. You're a little too fast with that gavel, Your Honor. What do you mean by that, Mr. Godot? The trial isn't over yet, is what he means. What? Plus fun coffee. Yeah, there's a lot of coffees. Right. Remember what Miss Evil Spirit said in her testimony? Huh? Dahlia's testimony? Alright, so they're just repeating the fact that she got stabbed in the back and lost consciousness. I'm not gonna read through that again. Just as Dahlia Hawthorne was about to attack Maya. She was stabbed and killed by someone. Yes, that's right. The person that was ultimately killed was the spirit medium that channeled Dahlia. At least Donim. No, Misty Fay. But who killed her? We still don't know who did it. This isn't over? Unless someone else is found guilty, the accused is still on trial. We can't let her walk until there's evidence that proves her innocence. No way! But this court isn't prepared for any further testimony. The prosecution is ready to call our final witness. Final witness? This one will clear up the whole mystery. The mystery of who killed Misty Fay. Hmm, indeed. Does to say it was when the old bag would be done with it? Yeah, pretty much. Is it really all right, Mr. Prosecutor? Of course it's all right, Madam Attorney. Very well, then. Who is this final witness? Well, I mean, it has to be Maya. Huh. Isn't it obvious? There's one person who saw the whole event, but the final dagger in this case. Someone who saw the murder take place. The very person who saw her mother killed in front of her own eyes. You... You mean Maya? You can't. She can't testify after what she's just been through. We need to find the truth. The prosecution calls Maya Fay to the witness stand. Bang. Very well. But first, we'll take a brief recess. We'll have to wait for Miss Fay to recover before summoning her. 
Once we receive the doctor's permission, we will proceed with the trial. Hey, Trite. I've got something to say to you, so listen up. What is it? I don't think much of you as a lawyer. It's always the same with you. Somehow managed to just squeak by without even a faint understanding of the case. Some beautiful women always seem to come dashing in at the last minute to save you. Yeah, it is really annoying, actually. You've got some nerve. But that's not, go go not going to happen this time. This time, you're going to have to do this by yourself. Oh my gosh, someone is finally saying enough of the spirit shenanigans. About time. It only took three games, right, chat? No more cheating, cheater. That's enough. This court is now in recess. February 10th, 256 p.m. Just a court, defendant lobby number one. I'm truly sorry about everything. You were working so hard to defend me. I was thought I said defeat for a second. But I was missing all day. We didn't even have a chance to talk. He's right. I met Iris at the training hall yesterday. Oops. They had already switched places, and Iris was inside the sacred cavern. I wanted to at least be in the defendant's box today to root you on. Well, it wasn't your fault. You were locked up by this you were locked up this whole time. Something more important than that, though. I have to ask you. Why did you help your sister out as much as you did? Huh? You had tried to get help at the sacred cavern yesterday. You wouldn't have spent an entire day locked up in there. My sister. I felt sorry for her. She was abandoned by her mother. She never got any love from our father either. Yes, but it was the same for you too, wasn't it? Yes, but at least I had Sister Bikini. It was like a mother to me. If only Dahlia had come with me to Hazakura Temple. I always... I always loved her. Dahlia was always so smart, so strong. She never complained about a thing. Except for when she conspired to kill basically everybody. That's why I... That's why I promised her I would help her. Are you talking about the fake kidnapping case 11 years ago? Yes. I wanted to be useful to her in some way. 1v1 file destination alive people only, exactly. Don't forget no items. But as usual, I was too cowardly. The last minute, I ran away. Because of that. Dahlia's stepsister, Valerie, ended up... That was the case that wounded Mia so badly. But things didn't end there, of course. Some people suspected my sister was involved in the murder. Some people? You must mean... Yes. Two defense attorneys, Mia Fey and Diego Armando, who's totally not Godot, by the way. After poisoning Mr. Armando, he's getting too close to learning the truth. Kelly even tried to kill the person who had unknowingly hit the poison for her. You. That's right. Iris, there's one more thing I have to ask you. Yes, what is it? The night of the murder. The person that cleaned up the corpse of the victim. Please don't in. Was it... Was it really you? Yes. It was me. That night after I rang the lights out bell, I went back to my room. Around 10.30, received a call on my cell phone. It's a problem. Come to the inner temple right away. Assuming it was Godot that called her, so I just gave the Godot voice. I got on the snowmobile and headed for the inner temple. But... To the, the path to the inner temple was cut off, right? Exactly. We can't just leave the body here. You gotta do this exactly as I say, got it? We chuck a body. It was me. I was the one that received her body. The murder weapon had been left in her body so she wouldn't bleed too much. Except that Mystic Elise always held. Hey, didn't they, didn't they say she died of blood, blood loss? <laughs> Wait, they left it in her so she wouldn't bleed out? Okay, whatever. I knew it. 
So the actual murder weapon was the staff. Yes, that's right. Brought the body back to Hasakura Temple in the snowmobile. But why? Why did you alter the body? I didn't want anyone to know that the staff was the murder weapon. I didn't want to leave anything that would lead back to Misty Fay. So I dressed her in a robe and stabbed her with the seven branch sword. Wiped the blood off the staff's blade and left it next to her on the ground. Iris, just tell me one last thing. Tell me the name of the person that called you your cell phone. The real killer. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I can't do it. I can't say who did it. I... I see. Victim staff update in the court record has the sword hand inside. The actual weapon used to murder the victim. Defendant? Yes? The judge is calling you. He wants you to see... You. He wants to see you in his chambers. There's some questions about Dahlia Hawthorne. All right. Well then, I'll see you later. Something I want to tell you. Oh, um, okay. I don't think she wants to tell me. So it's true. I was cooperated with the real killer. Maybe even from the very beginning. Phoenix. Mia. Um... How is Maya doing? I'm not gonna lie, this ended up being a lot more di- Like, I knew it was gonna be longer, but the fact that we're still not at the final discussion, I don't know if I could- I don't think I could complete it, sadly. We started, like, a, a little late, like a little after 10, but like, man, there's still so much more going here. So it looks like final trial will probably be about like four hours, maybe four and a half total. So we're, we're gonna have to break this up, I think. Just letting the chat know. Let you, letting you down now. Physically, I'm not worried. She'll recover completely. But emotionally, she's vi- Oh, she's been hurt very badly by this case. I see. You don't mean... She's learned who Elise Donim really was? Yes. I went to the medical office and talked with her. I told her everything I knew. But why? Maya is stronger than you think. I knew she could take it. All of it. What do you mean by that? I want you to figure that answer out all by yourself. The trial's about to restart. The real killer. Do you know who it is yet? Yeah, we know it's Godot. Iris wouldn't tell me who called her, but still. I think that just maybe. I know who it was. Wait, Phoenix actually knows who it was? Wow, that's, that, that's a first. That night, the victim was killed in the garden of the inner temple. The criminal wasn't just there by accident, which means that the killer knew of Dahlia's plan from the very beginning. And one more thing. The victim was moved to the Hazakura temple side by Pendulum. In other words, the criminal couldn't cross the bridge. That means they were stuck on the inner temple side for almost an entire day. It's almost like there was a character that had mysteriously been absent in the trial that should have been there. And they have an unexplained absence up to this point. Exactly, C. Phoenix agrees. Though the culprit was someone that wasn't in Hasakura Temple the following day. That's as much help as I could give you. The rest of the battle is yours to win. Or lose. Uh, She still helped us a little bit. I'm disappointed. Okay, I've got it. Thank you, Mia. Finally. So much time to bring this case to an end. What exactly did Maya see anyway? And who was it that actually killed Misty Fay? Wherever it was, I have to prove it. Me, all by myself. To be continued. There we go, chat. We're going to take a break here. I don't think I'll have time in the evening to potentially take this up, so we'll wait till next week, sadly. So that was way longer than I was thinking it was going to be. Yeah, I can see it's 12.24 already. I am very hungry, chat. I'm not going to lie. I was thinking it was going to be like two, two and a half hours total. Two and a half hours were only two parts out of, I think, three, if I was looking at the very light spoilers. So we still have quite a bit of a trial to go. So I guess we'll give thoughts. We'll switch over to Let's Chat in how I felt about the trial so far, because there's going to be a lot to talk about anyway. And then the final next week's session will cover more 
uh, general impressions of the entire case. So let, let's start with this more specifically. That way it isn't just like a massive word dump at the end anyway. So from the standpoint of the trial itself, um, they did get me with a little bit of a gotcha there. That was a little rude that they added a statement, but that wasn't the thing that you presented the evidence towards. That was pretty rude, I'm not going to lie. Um, other than that, I think everything else was fine. I think the logic made sense. I wasn't doing like crazy leaps in order to get to the conclusion. Um, it was slightly rude to make me guess the beam or the thing I had to point out in the picture. I'm really glad I looked at the image. But at the same time, the penalty for failure was only one point. So it wasn't too, too bad there at the same time. So, you know, overall, I do think this was probably one of the stronger cases in the game. I have to think about it in context of the other ones. I might have to refresh my memory a little bit. But honestly, like compared to some of the other, like, lesser cases i think i definitely preferred this one so far over a majority of what we've seen but we'll see if that opinion changes by the time we get to the end also i love that we basically just like banished uh dahlia hawthorne to hell like that's just canonically what happened so yeah uh I i'm happy that so far this is so much better than the second game with this specific case but we'll talk in more detail about how we feel about the other things i think next time so for now, chat, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. If you did watch to this point in the video of the VOD, I'd just like to say thank you again for watching. Hope to see you again in the final part leading into uh, Final Thoughts.